Imagine if you can talk with any PDF document, ask it any question, and it will actually give you an intelligent answer back. Well, this is exactly what you're going to learn today. Now, if you are a accountant, bookkeeper, or tax pro, or even someone getting into the industry or an entrepreneur, I think you're gonna get a lot of value because these are things that I'm personally using myself to get ahead, and I'm gonna show you how to save time and money by using this. So what we're gonna to use today is ChatGPT to do this. Now, if you're not using ChatGPT, it's, it's super simple to use, uh, it's easy to sign up, uh, it's free. I'm gonna show you how to do this on the free version and how to do this also on the paid version as well. So if you're looking at my screen here, what I have here is I'm in ChatGPT, and uh, so this is the free version here, GPT 3.5. However, today, to start with, I'm gonna use the GPT 4 version to go through this, okay? So when you're on this, you want to click on this GPT 4, and you wanna go down to the last one, which says plugins, because we're gonna use a, a special free plugin to talk with the PDF. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the plugins beta, and then you're gonna see it says no plugins enabled. So we're gonna click on it again, and we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here to go to the plugin store. So make sure you scroll all the way to the bottom, you click on plugin store, and it's gonna load up the plugins. Now, there are literally dozens and dozens of plugins. Uh, I go in depth on a lot of these on some of my other videos, but for today, we're gonna keep it super simple, and we're gonna look for a special plugin called ask your PDF, okay? And there's other PDF plugins available, but I recommend this because it's free, it's awesome, it just, it also, uh, it works with PDFs, but it also works with a bunch of other documents as well. So let's go ahead and click on this, and we're gonna click on install, okay? So it takes a moment to install, uh, especially if you're using plugins for the first time. Once it installs, uh, you're pretty much done. Uh oh, it looks like I got an error. So let me go ahead and try that again. Okay, great, so that worked out well. So I can see it's uh, installed. So now I'm gonna click on the X, and if I click on this little drop down again, I'm gonna notice, so I have some other stuff that I installed earlier, but what you wanna do is you wanna look for Astro PDF and make sure it's in that blue check right there. Okay, that means it's enabled, okay? So now I see a little PDF icon, so now I can start. Okay, so let's use some really, I love to use like really practical examples. We're not just gonna talk to any random PDFs. Let's gonna use, let's use something that we can use every day in our practice, okay? Now there's two things in particular. Um, a lot of practitioners are, you know, have a lot of questions regarding the Inflation Reduction Act, right? Because it's massive, massive amounts of information that was provided. Also the Secure 2.0 Act, massive, massive information that your clients are probably asking you, um, that you're looking for opportunities. Um, so let's kind of start with those. So let's just say, for example, with the, uh, let's kind of go back with the, uh, the, the first one here, the Inflation Reduction Act, right? So let's, let's, they issued new guidance. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information out there. So I'm going to go to Revenue Procedure 22, uh, 2022, dash 38, okay? And it pulls up this massive PDF. This is basically a 28 page PDF talking about um, what's new in the Reflation Reduction, uh, Inflation Reduction Act. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't have time to read through all 28 pages. I mean, I actually love this stuff and I, and I, and I kind of did it, but for you, I'm gonna show you how to make it super simple, okay? So 28 pages, lots of stuff. At the end of the day, your clients wanna know, okay, what's new, what's in it for me? Is there any opportunities I can take advantage of, right? And from you, from a practice perspective, you don't wanna spend a lot of time going through this, but you wanna get intelligent answers, all right? So let's kill two birds with one stone. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna go back to ChatGPT, okay? And now that the plugin is enabled, what you're going to do is you're simply going to point it to the PDF, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and type in uh, what I want this plugin to do. So let me go ahead and type it in at the bottom here and what changed this year with the earned income credit, okay? So I'm gonna start this off by asking this document a question. So 
again, it'll answer any questions on a PDF, but I recommend asking specific questions, okay? So I'm asking specifically, in my case, I wanna know what's up with the earned income credit. So I'm gonna ask that question, and you notice I pasted the link to this PDF, right? So this is the external link. And don't worry, if you have a local file, I'm gonna show you how to do that a little bit later. Um, and be sure to stick around to the very end of this video, because I actually have a special treat that I think you're gonna love. Okay, so now I went ahead and pasted that in there. I'm gonna click on enter. And now what happens is it's pretty much magic because what happens is it scans the entire PDF document with the plugin and all 28 pages in a matter of seconds. And now it's ready to answer that question for me. So let's see what comes back. Okay, it says the changes to the earned income credit for the year 2023 is outlined in the IRS document, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here are the key changes. The earned income amount is the amount of earned income at or above uh, which the maximum amount of the earned income credit is allowed. Uh, it talks about the threshold phase out amount. It talks about the completed phase out amount. And it even gives me a cool little table that I can use um, just as a summary with some of the things. So for example, if I see, uh, let's just see here, uh, if I had, you know, two children, uh, the earned income amount is 16, 16,510, and the maximum amount of credit is 6604. So I have a quick reference to all of this information that was pulled uh, from this document here, okay? And just to make sure that this ChatGPT is telling me the truth and it's not hallucinating or making up stuff, I can double check and I can reference this, right? So for example, I know that in this case, it's uh, $16,510 uh, for the earned income amount. So if I copy this and let's go back to the actual document and if I do a fine and I paste it in here, I can see that it actually referenced this table. So it literally grabbed this table and summarized the entire document and included it into the chat GBF, uh, chat GPT interface that we see here. Okay, let's take another quick example. So let's go to another question. Um, let's try this. So now I'm gonna type below any credits any new credits or deductions that I could mention to my tax accounting clients, okay? So what I'm using here is I'm looking for opportunities because I love mining new accounting and tax information to look for opportunities for me and for my clients. So I'm looking, hey, is there anything I can actually use uh, to help out my clients, all right? So I'm asking the PDF again. It says, okay, so here are some new credits, deductions, and adjustments for the year 2023 that you might wanna mention to your tax accounting clients. Cool, now when is the last time you actually had a conversation with a PDF and it's actually giving you intelligent information like this, all for free. Okay, so the first one, it talks about the energy efficient commercial building deduction. Okay, cool, it talks about cafeteria plans, all right? It talks about the qualified transportation fringe benefit, adoption assistant programs. All right, this is a bit new, um, the election expense. So it goes into detail just kind of, you know, item uh, basically summarizing the credits and deductions that I think I could mention to my tax accounting clients. If you have bookkeeping clients or any other particular specialties, you can you can kind of change your prompt uh, for that. It's completely customizable. Let's use another one. So let's go in this third example. I'm gonna ask a different question. I'm gonna say, okay, um, most of my clients are individuals, not businesses. Summarize only the updates that impact individuals, right? So I'm gonna click enter on there. So again, now I'm asking it specific information pertaining to my individual clients, um, not particular ones that are in, that have businesses. Okay, so now um, what it says is, all right, so one is the refundable credit uh, for coverage under a qualified health plan. Okay, interest on education loans, age or blind standard deduction, cafeteria plans, qualified transportation fringe benefit. Okay, so this is uh, specifically going into folks that are individuals, uh, not necessarily businesses. Now I can use the other side of that, right? Uh, just to kind of fact check here, I can say, okay, and this obviously is still going because it's finding a ton of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and um, and at any point, you can actually click on stop generating if you don't want it to go through more. So now I'm gonna try something different, the opposite. Okay, now give me the stuff that only impacts businesses, all right? Now, ChatGPT is smart because it actually understands the context and it remembers the history of the conversation. So 
I just said, now give me the stuff that impacts uh, businesses. It's not asking me, what do you mean by businesses or what PDF? It automatically knows. So that context is remembered there, all right? So now the stuff for businesses, all right, rehabilitation expenditures, low income housing credit, um, employee health insurance expense for of small employers, exemption amounts for AMT, energy efficient, uh, energy efficient commercial building deduction, limitation on use of cash method of accounting, Okay, so it goes into detail and it's, um, again, I'm mining this for the specific information that I'm looking for. Okay, let's use one example, uh, one other example before we go to a whole different way of doing this. Uh, let's just say here, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop this here. So now I'm gonna click on this next example and I'm gonna say, my clients are mostly real estate, anything impacting real estate, all right? So many of you may have a particular niche, right? So whether it's you know real estate or construction or you know crypto, um, you can actually ask it specific questions. So in this case, I'm asking about real estate. So anything impacting real estate, tell me about it. So again, it's scanning through the entire PDF document in the background and it's queuing up the question specifically uh, for, th for this answer here. Okay, so real estate, energy efficient commercial building deduction. All right, um, so it's giving me a little more detail about that. Uh, actually, a lot de of detail. Election to expense certain depreciable assets, okay? So you can see that it's literally combing through the key bits of information that I have specified for it, and it's giving me information uh, basically devoted to exactly what I asked it in this particular example. Okay, so let's look at something else here. Now I'm gonna show you how you can actually switch this up a little bit. Let's use a different example. Let's say in the next case, I um, maybe I don't have the paid version of ChatGPT, right? Maybe I'm just kind of, uh, I'm not sure about it. I don't wanna pay the $20 a month for ChatGPT. I'm just gonna use the, the, the free version. Or maybe I don't have an online PDF. Maybe it's a local document that I just want to use, right? So what about these 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 fringe cases, all right? So I'm going to show you a way to take care, of, kill those two birds with one stone. Now remember, we installed a plugin called Ask Your PDF. They actually have a companion website, and if we go here, we can see it's called uh, AskYourPDF.com. Completely free. The cool thing about this is it it, it nails a few things. Number one. You can actually use it to talk not just with PDFs, but text documents, PowerPoints, uh, CSV, EPUBs, uh, rich text files as well. Uh, so imagine having a, a long, uh, you know, a really long CSV file. You want to talk to it, ask questions. You can just import it into there. Okay. Um, and the other thing I love about this is, like I said, it's free and you can actually access local files as well. So I have a local file. Um, let's just use this for, for specific example. Um, I got a file about the new Secure 2.0 ad. Uh, massive document. I have a ton of questions, but I don't feel like you know googling googling the heck out of it and asking this and you know or I don't maybe I don't have colleagues to help answer questions for me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the document. I'm going to drag it from my desktop and I'm going to drag it onto this to upload it, or I could just click on it and what happens? It it will grab the file from my local computer. Okay, so now I loaded it and it says, okay, hello, I am a multilingual document assistant. I can help you with any questions you may have regarding the document you have uploaded. The document is about the Security Point O Act of 2022, which aims to expand retirement uh, savings uh, coverage and increase participation in retirement plans. Okay, so it kind of gives a quick, quick little summary of it first. And then it also recommends intelligent questions. Here are the three possible questions you may have. What is the secure at? What is it, right? Uh, what are the changes that will affect, uh, take effect under the Section 101 of the Act? How will Section 103 of the Act affect IRA and retirement plan contributions? Feel free to ask me any questions. Okay, you betcha. I'm going to ask you some uh, key questions. Now, let's just say, uh, you know, I do retirement planning for my practice. So I have tons of questions about IRAs and 401ks and how that uh, impacts my clients. So the first question I'm going to ask, um, Let's actually just keep it simple. So I'm going to type in here, what changes for 401ks? All right. So I type that in there and it says section 101 of the Security 2.0 Act 22 requires 401k and 403b plans to automatically enroll participants in respective plans upon becoming eligible. 
Okay, so that's a change right there. So I can actually look into this and see exactly how this impacted our Fort 1K plans. Um, and this, I can use this information to help educate my clients. Let's use another example here. Uh, let's say in this example, uh, how about any changes with minimum distributions? All right, so I'll type in that question there and let's see what it comes back with. And it's actually pretty speeding because it's actually looking through a pretty massive document. Um, if we actually pull, while that's thinking about it, if I pull this document up in the background here, you can see here, so this is my local copy of the Section uh, Secure 2.0 Act, and you can see here it's quite massive, right? It goes into ton and tons of detail. Uh, how long is this thing actually? Uh, 19 pages of stuff, okay? So it instantly combs through this stuff, um, sometimes it takes a little while. Um, in this case, it's taking a little longer than usual. So uh, let's let's go ahead and give it some more time. Okay, in this case, it says section 202 of the document addresses the changes for minimum distributions. It repeals the 25% limit and allows up to $200,000 to be used from an account balance to purchase a QLAC. Okay, now a couple things going on here. Number one, this is this is pretty awesome because now I know that the twenty two uh, twenty five percent limit uh, is actually repealed. So this is a massive opportunity, particular for uh, for some of my older clients uh, that uh, I, I work with in terms of retirement. This is a massive opportunity. Okay, so again, I love doing this because I can actually use this to mine mine particular information, okay? Um, but it, it references this thing called QLAC, right? Um, maybe I don't really know what that is, right? Now, I, I, can, I can Google it or I can ask it specifically here, all right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's ask it a very specific question about QLACs. And um, one other cool thing is, you know, particularly if you're new in the practice, you can actually get it to explain things in very simple terms. So I'm gonna paste in here, what are QLACs? Explain it in simple words like I'm a sixth grader, okay? So I don't want anything complicated. I'm gonna click on enter here. Okay, now QLACs are a type of retirement savings plan you can buy with a lump sum of money. You pay for it when you're younger, but you don't get any money back until you're older, usually around age 72. When you're older, the QLAC starts paying you a regular amount of money every month for the rest of your life. It's like a way to make sure you have enough money to live on when you're older, even if you live a really long time. Okay, well that sounds like a nice sixth grader to me, um, but it breaks it down into very simple terms and you can actually use some of this information to, you know, if your clients are having questions about this, you can actually use it to break it down because I don't like to talk technical to clients. Okay, let's try one more here. Uh, let's use another one. So. Basically, it kind of gave it to us like a sixth grader. Let's just kind of get a, a quick little understanding of that again. So I'll ask it, what are the advantages of these new QLAC rules again? Just kind of like explain this to me. So basically, it goes through and says, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a 25% limit on the exemption minimum distribution because they've, they've been repealed and up to $200,000. Uh, can now be used uh, from an account balance, okay? So it gives key bits of information. So again, it, it remembers the older conversation and it references, it, it loads up that entire doc, it scans through it, so you don't have to pour through these many, many pages, right? So what we just learned today, we learned how to, we looked at two PDF documents, one was over 20 pages, one was about 19 pages. We were quickly able to ask it questions. Um, and just to summarize, we looked at local, how to do it from a local file, we looked at how to do it from a online file as well okay so like i said um this is it in a nutshell how to talk to a pdf ver two very powerful tools and as i mentioned at the end i have a little something for you so if you liked what you saw in this video uh, i want you to like it uh, share it um, and follow me for more information like this uh, i run a daily newsletter and counts in front of ai uh, where we help you build a highly profitable firm using ai saving a lot of time saving a lot of money and if you subscribe to the free newsletter i'll actually drop links to all of the stuff uh, additional supplemental information that i do and all the prompts that i use sign up and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.